And so, here we are on the equator itself, and uh, the word spread throughout Kenya, and Peter has made a special, he, ha he runs a duca down the road. We're going to stop at his duca, which, by the way, is probably the best duca we'll come by. But in any case, he came up here, free will, to give us a demonstration on why things work as they do because of the equator. So if you will all watch your step and carefully come right down to the equator here, Peter's going to explain all this. It's Peter. And as you can see here, we got one chimney here and the other one on that side. This is the ruins of the Silverback Hotel, which burned down back in 1974. And I'm going to show you a demonstration of how water is affected by the equator when you are on either side of the line and when you are exactly on the line. The equator passes in the east to west direction along this line and all around the world. This is the northern hemisphere and this is the southern hemisphere. If you drain a sink when you are on the northern side of the equator and you wash the water as it drains, you will see that the water always rotates clockwise. You cross the equator and drain a sink when you are on the southern hemisphere, you will see that as the water drains, the rotation changes to counterclockwise. Hmm. On the line, and to prove that it's exactly where the equator passes, the water drains straight down and no rotation. We call this phenomenon Coriolis effect. Coriolis effect, and it's caused by the rotation of the earth. To start the demonstration, we are going to move 20 meters to the north, then we cross 20 meters to the south and finish up exactly on the line. 20 meters is the minimum distance you can move to notice the rotation. So we start 20 meters from the northern side. The cross will help you see the direction of the water. So slowly, as the water starts to drain, the straws will take a clockwise rotation and you will see the rotation better as the water gets lower. <coughs> if you move far to the north or far to the south, the rotation becomes faster. And if you go close towards the line, the rotation becomes slower and slower until the water stops exactly on the line. So that's why we have to give some distance from the equator so that the rotation can be noticeable. But even the, a little teeny hole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The scientific explanation for this rotation is a continuous spin. Mm -hmm. So when the earth is rotating from west to east, there is a force formed. And this force acts against the earth's rotation and it's termed as geostrophic force. So it's a counter force and moves from east to west when the earth is rotating from west to east. Then we have the external forces being pulled towards the center of gravity. We call that the pressure gradient. But before it gets to the center of gravity, they balance with the geostrophic force and they act in opposite directions. So turning clockwise on the north and counterclockwise on the south. This phenomenon is called Coriolis effect and is effective to the wind systems, the ocean currents and even the climbing vines. You find that vines growing on the northern hemisphere coils clockwise and vines growing on the southern hemisphere coils counterclockwise. Mm. Now, mm. let's see the difference on the other side. Mm. Okay, really, that, that's I got that. <laughs> <laughs> Before we see much of the counterclockwise rotation, I will turn them clockwise like we have seen on the north, and then we'll see them reverse back to counterclockwise just to make sure. So this was discovered by a Frenchman by the name of Gaspard Coriolis in the year 1776. What was his name? Gaspard Coriolis.
Coriolis. Yeah, that's bad Coriolis. Coriolis. Yeah, that's how they, can, how they call it that. So we define Coriolis effect as a balancing of two velocities. That is the geostrophic force and the pressure gradient. So a body freely moving in the northern hemisphere is always deflected to the right and a body freely moving in the southern hemisphere is always deflected to the left. The body of what? Anything, anything that is freely moving in the north. Not like the winds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or if, if, it, if you throw a stone, let's say, which goes for a long distance. Yeah. Um, yeah. After yeah. after a certain period, it's going to be deflected to the right or to the left, according to which hemisphere. And that if thing you're is in the north, it'll deflect to the right. Yeah, to the right so and to the left uh, on, on on the south. Mm. So if you sometimes got lost in the forest or you don't know where you are, you just bring a sink and you tell in which of the world you are in. <laughs> if you don't know where you are, <laughs> you don't have any water with you, just watch how the vines coil. You still yeah. tell whether you are north or south of the equator. That's but you keep away from the poles. If you get lost there, the water freezes, you can't say where you are. The <laughs> vines <laughs> don't grow. Yeah, so, so what do you do? <laughs> on oh the gosh. line, there will be no movement. The water drains straight down. And that's how you prove that the signboard is standing exactly on the equator. And so, let's go and prove it. <laughs> Precession now can just be caused by the disturbance of the wind, but not actual rotation. The straws can move in different directions, but not a circular motion. The suspense is mounting. <laughs> <laughs> The water is still draining. So, but is this the Greenwich meridian then this way? Pardon? Is this the Greenwich meridian? No, no, no. no this is not, not the Greenwich meridian. But I mean, if it's yeah, we are about um, okay. 35 Once. degrees east. Yeah. You're five degrees east. 35. 35. Oh, 35. 35. Yeah. You know the green. We are we are in this position here now yeah, the on the map, and the Greenwich meridian oh, okay. is on this position here. Yeah. 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 Okay. Pass so through West Africa. And here we are in South Africa. So any place along here, yeah. this would happen? This would happen, yeah. As far we over... We go through Ecuador. All the Yeah, all, all the way over. Right, right. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Let's put them yeah, in the middle so that yeah. you can see. They, they didn't get in the center of the air. I lost them. Yeah. Mm. With the air. Mm. <laughs> They're on the side. So that's how you tell when you're north if it's clockwise south mm -hmm. if it's counterclockwise or the equator if it's straight down mm -hmm. and so before this hotel burned down some 22 years ago you could have your drinks one leg on the north the other one on the south on the line you'd feel the drink go straight down <laughs> on the north you'd feel it go clockwise and south you'd feel it go counterclockwise <laughs> Okay, so those of you who might be interested in getting the certificates of crossing the equator, we are going to have a little stop down the road in my shop. If you would like to buy something, the guys will give you good prices. The certificates cost 200 shillings if you'd like one. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.